Meeting will please come to order. This is a duly advertised meeting of the Juliet Zoning Board of Appeals. In our capacity, we hear petitions for relief from the strict provisions of our city ordinance. In matters of this type, the decision of this board is final. In respect, it does not go to the mayor and city council for any further action. If you disagree with our decision, we do have recourse in a court of record. We also hear petitions for variations of land use. In matters of this type, we act as an advisory board to the mayor and city council, making a recommendation either for or against it. The final decision on land use is made by the mayor and the city council. Secretary, hold the board, please. Ms. Safford? Here. Mr. Alessio? Here. Mr. Nactree? Here. Mr. Riggs? Here. Ms. Rohr? Here. Mr. Hennessy? Here. Yeah, we could uh, move on if you'd like to uh, do approval of minutes for the March 18th uh, meeting. We have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Right Still so moved. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the minutes. Pull the board. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Nachtree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Rohr? Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Next item is citizens to be heard on agenda items. This section is for anyone wanting to speak regarding items listed on the agenda. Anyone speaking on an agenda item is entitled to speak for a maximum of four minutes. It is not a question and answer period and staff and the Zoning Board of Appeals does not generally respond to public comments. Please note speakers who engage in conduct injurious to the harmony of the Zoning Board of Appeals shall be called to order by the presiding officer and may forfeit the opportunity to speak. Is there anybody that would like to speak on an agenda item? Uh, please be aware that you'll be able to speak on the, uh, the agenda item when it comes up again. Uh, seeing none, we can move on to old business uh, under public hearing. We have none. Uh, moving on to new business public hearing. Uh, first item is petition. Do we have some that were taken off the agenda? Uh, we do have one that was kind of a companion piece on the agenda, 2021-19. That is being tabled to uh, next month. Uh, there's some issues uh, with uses there, and we're trying to get that straight, and uh, we'll have that straight for you uh, next so month. So anybody that's here for that petition, it won't be heard today. No. Uh, first uh, agenda item that will be heard is 2021-15. The applicant is James Hills. Uh, owner is BNB Developers LLC. The location is 100 McDonald Avenue. Uh, the request is for a special use permit uh, under purpose. The applicant is the contract tenant is requesting a special special use permit to allow large diesel trucks, not semi repair, located at 100 McDonald Avenue. City Council makes the final decision for this request upon the recommendation of the Zoning Board of Appeals. This petition was filed April 15th, 21. Uh, Site-specific information, the subject property located just south of West Jefferson Street on McDonald Avenue near the inter Interstate 55 <coughs> interchange. Property is 1.8 acres in size and is zone B3 general business. The 19,800 square foot office contractor building was completed around 2,000. Building includes two tenant spaces, 100 McDonald and 126 McDonald. The applicant seeks to lease the space at 100 McDonald. The tenant space at 126 McDonald Avenue is leased to Harburger. Uh, surrounding zoning, land use, and character to the north is B3 General Business Office Building Use. To the south is B3 General Business Contractor Yard and Office Use. To the east is RB Restricted Business Joliet Area Hospice Property. To the west is I-1 General Industrial, and that's Wingate Hotel. Under applicable regulations, section 4713.2 AG, special uses for B3 general business districts. Uh, section 47.5.2 C, criteria for issuance of a special use permit, and that is attached. Under discussion, uh, James Hills is the, the contact contract tenant who seeks a special use permit to allow a diesel truck repair business in the existing tenant space at 100 McDonald Avenue. City of Joliet zoning ordinance requires a special use permit for truck repair facilities. He intends to primar primarily service Ford F-250s to 550s with the occasional F-650. He also has experience working on international and Caterpillar diesel engines. 
would not service semi trucks and a prohibition of this activity has been made a condition of approval for this request. Floor plans, site plans, and other exhibits are included with the staff report packet. Interior of the unit in question can hold up to seven trucks. The unit also has 5,800 square feet of rear yard space. Access to the facility is through the front service door bay. There are, no, there are not any rear service bay doors. In addition to being the business owner, he intends to be the only employee. He expects to have 15 to 20 trucks on site at one time. Anticipated hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and occasional Saturday work. Under conditions, the Zoning Board desires to recommend approval of the special use permit request for a diesel truck repair facility. Shall, these conditions shall be included. No semi trucks shall be repaired at this facility. That no outside storage of customer vehicles shall be allowed on the landscaped area along McDonald Street, including the city parkway. And no outside storage of customer vehicles shall be allowed on the city streets. Temporary outside storage of vehicles waiting to be serviced or to be picked up shall be limited to 10 days. No temporary or long-term outdoor storage of inoperable vehicles, boats, recreational vehicles, or parts, including tires, shall be permitted. That off-street parking shall remain in the future that a city business license be secured prior to opening, that the special use granted shall herein terminate and lapse un unless a building permit or certificate of occupancy is obtained no later than 180 days of effective date of this ordinance, an erection or alteration of a building is started or the use is commenced within such period. The board may grant an extension of this period valid no more than 180 days upon written application and good cause shown without notice or hearing. That concludes the staff report. Mr. President. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a, there's a, one additional condition that failure to comply with any of the above conditions should result in a rehearing and a possible revocation of the special use permit. Is As the petitioner still here? <laughs> I'm representing uh, the Indian developer, the owner of the building. I do have uh, Taylor Hills, the daughter what of the square petitioner. Board you have? You swear the evidence you're about presented as the truth under penalty of law. Names and addresses. Mark Koenig, 1205 Highland Avenue, Joliet, Illinois, 60435. Taylor Vogren. Into the mic, please. Taylor Vogren, 158 MacArthur Drive, apartment 5322, Willowbrook, Illinois, 60527. Thank you. Any comments you'd like to make? Uh, I know the, the zoning should be correct on this or with, with the special use. He is not intending to do any semi-repair and ownership doesn't want any semi-repair there either. Uh, Jim's been a member of the community for a long time. He used to have a business down by Six Corners by Joe's Hot Dogs when I was a kid. So he's just not some guy coming on the outside wanting to do truck repair. He's been around and he's a, be a very good tenant for the owners. Okay, any other comments? Any comments by the board? Questions? Is there anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Is there anyone present opposed? Chair sure, then closes this petition to the floor and ask the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. Second. A motion to second to approve the petition. Pull the board. Mr. Notre. Aye. Mr. Riggs. Aye. Ms. Rohr. Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. So that petition uh, passed uh, with the recommendation for approval and we'll go to City Council the second meeting in May. Uh, next agenda item is 2021-16 Armando Cervantes, 1000 North Center Street. Uh, request is a variation uh, the purpose, the applicant is requesting a variation on front and side yard setbacks to allow a second floor addition to an existing one and a half story home located at 1000 North Center Street. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes the final decision in this matter. Requested variations from the Zoning Board of Appeals include a variation to reduce the north side side yard setback from eight feet to 3.1 feet, variation to reduce the front yard setback from 30 feet to 20.4 feet. Section 4717.22, uh, nonconformities, subsection three, nonconforming structures of the zoning ordinance allows pre-existing nonconformities to remain as long as the structures are not enlarged or altered in a way that increases their nonconformity. 
Site-specific information, the property in question is 7,847 square feet in size. Lot measures 59 feet wide and 133 feet deep. Property is owned R2 single family residential. Circa 1904, house on the property is one and a half stories in height and has 1,314 square feet of living space. Property includes a detached garage with enclosed patio. The sidewalk along Moran Street has seriously deteriorated. A plat of survey of the property can be found as an attachment. Surrounding zoning land use and character. Surrounding parcels are zoned R2 single family. The majority of the homes in this neighborhood are single family homes that are on one to two stories in height. Applicable regu regulation section 47 6.4 R2 single family residential yard and lot requirements. Section 47-19.8 criteria for granting a variation and refer to a, your attachment. Discussion. The existing second story of this house was damaged by a fire in February 2020. Second story is technically a half story because the living space sits inside the roof structure. With his insurance payout from the fire damage, Mr. Cervantes seeks to make his home a true two-story house. The existing house is 3.1 feet from the north property line and 20.4 feet from the front west property line, which do not meet the building setback requirements in the R2 zoning district. Zoning ordinance allows pre-existing non-conformities to remain as long as the structures are not enlarged or altered in a way that increases their non-conformity. Therefore, the applicant must obtain variations because the structure's pre-existing non-conformities will be increased by the construction of the second floor addition. Floor plan for the proposed second floor as well existing first floor were included with the petition. Footprint of the house will remain the same. Under conditions, the zoning board desires to approve these variations requests to allow the addition of a second floor in an existing single family house. The following conditions should be included that the sidewalk along Rand Street shall be repaired prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. The city, upon mutual agreement, shall allow an extension of this time frame if the property has been accepted into the 50-50 sidewalk replacement program. And two, that a building permit shall be obtained prior to the construction. That concludes the staff report. Petitioner present. You swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth under penalty of law. I do. Name and address, please. Armando Cervantes, 1000 North Center Street, Joliet, Illinois, 60435. Okay, any comments you'd like to make, sir? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, basically, I've lived in Joliet pretty much my entire life, uh, well over 20 years. Um, I purchased, this is actually my very first home um, where I've had my child, my wife, um, my son actually goes to school right up the street at Cunningham Elementary, and uh, I went to school here in Joliet also. Um, really just, uh, this is my home. You know, I've been out of it for over a year now. I just really wanna go home. Um, I really wanna make the property better. This is why I'm requesting the two-story addition. Um, I want it to be a true story because I feel it'll bring value to the community. Um, also, I have a corner lot, which having a two-story building, two-story house. Um, recently, you know, everything fixed up would greatly improve the area, would bring much desired curb appeal, and help everybody bring up their uh, property value. So really, I just look for your approval so that me and my family can go back home. Well, I went by there, and I saw that elephant in the yard. And I hope that wasn't a political statement of yours. <laughs> it actually came with if the house. If there's any Democrats on this board, you're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it came with the house. Um, it was originally well, a water pump. it on that it was there when you bought it. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the things I told my wife That's is... a good political dodge. Yeah. Okay, um, I told my wife that elephant was staying, so she wasn't too happy. <laughs> I just have a, a question for you. Whoops. Sure. Um, so upstairs will be, what, two bedrooms and a bathroom, is that right? Uh, three bedrooms and two bathrooms. And two bathrooms? Yes. Okay. No kitchen? No kitchen upstairs. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor? Chair closes the petition floor and ask the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Call the board. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Rohr? Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Noctree? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And that is approved and is final here. Uh, next petition is 2021-17. The applicant is KBP Foods. The owner is James Amsbury. Location is 116 North Larkin Avenue. Uh, request is a variation. The applicant is requesting a variation on signage to allow non-illuminated signs that do now face a public way located at 116 North Larkin Avenue. The ZBA makes the final decision for this variation request. Under site-specific information, the subject property is the Kentucky Fried Chicken Restaurant, which sits at the northeast corner of Larkin Avenue and Oneida Street. Subject property consists of two lots for a total of 0.82 acres. Property is zoned B3 general business. Surrounding zoning, land use, and character to the north is B3 general business, and there's a Sherman Williams paint store there. To the south is B3 general business, and that's a Sunbaum bicycles and, and an office. To the east is R2 single family residential and re, is, is residential use. To the west is R2 single family residential and is Joliet West High School. Uh, applicable regulations, 4717.21 uh, signs, 4717.213 BB, criteria for granting a sign variation, and you could refer to your to the attachment. Under discussion, Kentucky Fried Chicken is renovating the restaurant by updating their existing facades, as well as all their signs. As part of the renovation project, the applicant proposes uh, adding two non-illuminated signs on the north elevation of the building. Uh, those are signs G, to allow for more exposure to southbound traffic on Larkin Avenue, as well as to break up the long expanse of wall surface area with detail. City of Joliet's zoning ordinance only allows signs that face a public street in the B3 zoning district. Therefore, applicant seeks a variation to allow signs that do not face a public way on the north elevation of the res restaurant. First proposed sign, real meals to go is seven square feet in size and will be on the drive-through canopy. The second proposed sign made the hard way made by hand is 17.7 .7 square feet in size will be located just ahead of the pickup window. Together the proposed signs total 24.7 in total sign area. The other new signage for this location meets city sign requirements and have been permitted. The new signage includes the two signs subject to this variation request would amount to 344 square feet of signage at this property. The property is allotted up to 900 square feet of signage due to its corner location along two public streets. Signage site plan and sign elevations for all signs as part of the renovation project are included as part of the application package under conditions we have none and that concludes our staff report. Petitioner here. Anyone here on the petition? If you want, uh, staff can maybe uh, act as representative for the petition just to keep this yeah, moving nice along. Well. I have no objection. Are there any questions? Yeah, yeah maybe you said so. Jim, but uh, if so, I missed it. The, the property is permitted a certain total of signs because of its corner location, and I don't remember what you what you said. It was in the hundreds of square feet. Um, what would the total sign, the actual signage with the new signs, exceed that limit? No, no, they're they're far under that still. Uh, I think they're allotted 900 square feet, and I think they were in the 300 square foot range for total signage. So they're still way under their total. Um, this is just that uh, the signs do not face a, a street. So okay. uh, that's that's the problem in seeking our variance uh, need. Okay, thank you. Any further comments by the board? Anyone here in opposition to this petition? Anyone in favor of it? Chair closes the petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a motion. I move we approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the petition. Pull the board, please. Ms. Rohr? 
Aye. Ms. Sapper? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Nactree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. And that uh, vote for approval is final. Uh, next agenda item is 2021-18. The applicant is Express Signs. The owner is C5LC at I-80 Joliet LLC. Location is 1023 East Learway Road. Request is a variation. The purpose is the applicant who is a sign contractor for the logistics company operating at 1023 East Learway Road is requesting a variation to increase maximum size of parking signage. ZBA makes the final decision for this variation request. Under site-specific information, the subject property was annexed into the city of Joliet in <coughs> October 2006 and classified to I-1 Light Industrial District Zoning. Pre-annexation agreement and preliminary plat were approved by the city council in November 2004. The lot of the subject property was created with the approval of the Laraway Distribution Center subdivision in October 2006. 1.03 million square foot warehouse and distribution center was completed in 2017. Surrounding zoning land use and character, the zoning surrounding all four sides of the subject property is I-1 Light Industrial District. Property to the south is owned by the Chicagoland Speedway and is part of their operations. Property to the west is a vacant lot. Property to the east is warehouse and distribution center. Property to the north uh, includes a stormwater detention area. Applicable regulations 4717.21 is signs, 4717.213BB criteria for granting a sign variation and again you can refer to the attachment. Under discussion, SRC Logistics specializes in core logistics and core management for the remanufacturing industry. At their Lairway Road facility, they accept parts from General Motors inspect the parts, and then redistribute the parts. They recently opened their facility and expect to process 1.8 million pieces of core annually. The applicant express signs seeks the variation to increase the maximum size of parking signage on behalf of SRC Logistics. Purpose of their request is to install larger directional signs to identify the entrances to the property and, appropri and appropriately direct truck drivers and visitors. The company feels that the larger signs will help to ensure the safety of those who enter the property. City of Joliet Zoning Ordinance limits directional signage to three square feet of sign area and to a height of 10 feet. Zoning Ordinance allows a property a maximum of six square feet of total parking signage. SRC Logistics proposes two double-sided signs that each have 31.5 square feet of sign area and an eight-foot height. A sign will be placed at each of the property's entrances. Signage site plan and sign elevations are included as part of the application packet. The company also plans to erect a monument sign which is not subject to this variance request. Pro proposed signage for this location meets all other city sign requirements. Under conditions, we have none, and that concludes our staff report. Once again, is petitioner present? Before the evidence show Paul present us the truth under penalty of law. I do. Name and address. Kelly Fosberg, 700 Westridge, Joliet, Illinois. Any comments, sir? Not really. I can answer any questions. It's pretty basic. You have no more comments to make? No. <laughs> okay. Any questions by the board? No comments, no questions. Anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor? Anyone opposed? We're running out of opposition here, jeepers. <laughs> Chair closes petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. Second. It's an omen. We have a motion and second to approve the petition. Hurry up. Ms. Sapper. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Nocturne? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Rohr? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Good luck. And that vote for approval is final. Uh, petition number 20, 2119, that is the uh, petition that has been requested to be tabled. Um, I think a motion uh, is probably in order to uh, agree with that uh, request. So motion move. To table petition 2021-19. I so move. 
Second. We have a motion and second to table the petition. Hold the board. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Nachtree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Rohr? Aye. Ms. Saffer? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Moving on, 2021-20, these are all kind of companion pieces, so keep that in mind. Uh, the applicant uh, is Transport Properties LLC. The location is 2951 Mound Road. The request is a special use permit. Under purpose, the applicant is requesting a special use permit for truck and trailer parking at 2951 Mound Road. City Council makes the final decision for this request upon the recommendation of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Under site-specific information, the subject property is located at 2951 Mound Road, which is about one-third of a mile east of Hubble Road. Vacant land is approximately 23.975 acres in size and is zoned I-2 General Industrial. It most recently has been used as a fill site. Interstate 80 forms the northern border of the subject property. Uh, under surrounding zoning, land use, and character, to the north is B3 General Business Warehousing and Interstate 80. To the south is I2 General Industrial Vacant Land. To the east is I2 General Industrial Fill Site Vacant Land. To the west is I2 General Industrial, and there is a truck terminal. Uh, applicable regulation, Section 4713.2AG, special uses for B3 General Business Districts. Section 47.5.2C, criteria for issuance of a special use permit and see your attachment for that. Under discussion, Transport Properties LLC is the contract purchaser of this vacant land. They intend to eventually subdivide the property into three tenant spaces at a future date and will go through the city subdivision process. In the meantime, the petitioner seeks three special use permits for this address, which will be considered separately by the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, at this meeting. The other two petitions, petition uh, 19, uh, that's for the vehicle charging uh, use that you just tabled and the 2021-21 special use permit for truck equipment and sales service, uh, uh, which you'll hear after this. Uh, for the petition subject to this request, the transport properties intends to sell or lease the 2.6 acre lot three to a user for a truck and trailer parking facility. Transport companies has indicated that the user will likely be the user of lot one or, or lot two. The conceptual site plan for this lot shows parking stalls for 50 trucks. And the site plan is included in the staff report packet. The development will be subject to the city's payment in lieu of taxes, what, what's referred to as the pilot fee, which requires the property owner of a truck parking facility to make an annual payment to the city for every truck or trailer parking space at their site. The city approved the pilot ordinance in 2021 to help fund City of Joliet road maintenance costs caused by heavy truck using facilities that generate low property taxes. The proposed development will comply with the city's landscape and screening requirements and non-residential design standards. Site plan shows a 100 foot landscape buffer along Interstate 80 the overall site plan for these three future tenant spaces includes a detention pond at the southwest corner on lot five at, at the location of the existing pond in a shared private drive proposed lot four. All public improvements will be provided for as per the zoning ordinance, subdivision regulations, and the requirement of the public works and utilities department, sewer and water tap on fees, and the development impact fee will be required under conditions, if the zoning board desires to re recommend approval of the special use permit, following conditions would be included. One, that the development will be subject to the city's payment in lieu of taxes, the pilot fee, that a site plan and landscaping plan shall be submitted and approved by staff as part of a future building permit application process. Three, that a business license uh, shall be secured prior to opening. Four, our special use 180 day clause uh, provision that was read earlier under five fail failure to comply with any of the above conditions could result in a rehearing and a possible revocation of the special use permit and that concludes our staff report Petitioner here <clears throat> sorry Ren. for the evidence your box presented the truth under penalty of law i do name and address uh, Nate Washburn, 111 North Ottawa Street. Uh, I'm attorney and counsel for Transport Properties. Um, I wanted to ask, 
would it be more efficient, Jim, to read the staff report on the next one and then just take two separate votes so I can answer all questions at once, or would you rather I? Um, no, I think we need to take them separately. They're, they're separate cases, and it was our understanding you didn't want them to you know, be together okay. in case one gets voted for, for approval, one doesn't. So Understood. I believe separately is the better way to go. Okay, not a problem. Uh, so as uh, the staff report indicated, Transport Properties is uh, the contract purchaser for the entire site at 2951 Mound Road. We do have uh, plans to file a subdivision uh, to subdivide the lot, uh, the property into five lots. Uh, we're here today on lot, the special use permits for lots one and three. Um, you guys have graciously uh, tabled uh, lot two. Uh, lot three here is going to be a truck parking uh, uh, lot, and there's not much more to it than that. Uh, we anticipate the user of lot one or potentially the user of lot two to use this lot as overflow parking for their current use. Um, at this time, we have no tenant or any firm use lined up for this. Um, and we would ask for your approval. Uh, unless you have any questions, we're happy to answer those. Well, you answered one of mine already. I was going to ask if you had anybody in mind. Is there anyone expressed any interest? Uh, well, we do have a tenant uh, lined up for lot one, and we believe we have a a contract purchaser lined up for lot two once we've taken down the site. Um, right now we're negotiating with those individuals. Uh, hopefully one of them will lease the space or acquire the space on lot three. But as it sits right now, lot three is uh, more or less just a spec parking lot for uh, future use. Uh, what exactly type of tenants would you be looking for there? Uh, for lot three? Yeah. Uh, well, ideally it would be the user of lot one or lot two. Uh, beyond that, uh, I think it's just going to be whatever the market bears. It was uh, a little bit too much to include in our current lot one or lot two configuration. So we're just thinking at this point the best possible use for so whatever whatever they decide to rent to or whatever development occurs, that would have to be subject to the city's codes and authorizations, right, Jim? Yes, that's that's right. You know, we, we see so lot we three as more of an overflow here. parking lot for one of the other two users. Most likely, it's too small. Most likely to stand alone. Mm -hmm. And that's fall within the zone, proper zoning and everything. That's what they're going through now to get that permitted uh, for a separate use if it if it were to go that way. But uh, as they've indicated and indicated to us, it will most likely act as overflow parking for one of the other two users. Okay. I would say if you'd like uh, the uh, somebody from Transport Properties is here and could uh, try to answer that better, but I believe the only other conceivable use for that property that's been discussed, it would be, you know, parking for heavy equipment if somebody needed some sort of overflow, but I think even that, that was a landfill at one time, wasn't it? it? This was, I believe, an old landfill, and I believe next door is uh, a landfill that's currently in the process of closing out. That landfill's been there for what, about 50 years? 50, 60 years? At least. Is there a law uh, on how long the landfill exists before you can build on it? There are, and those are, to my understanding, I'm not an expert on them, those are highly regulated um, by so other EPA, governmental groups. Um, I don't think this was not a landfill um, you know, for waste. Uh, this was, I, I believe, a clean fill site, you know, but um, those other, uh, you know, waste related landfills are totally different. They could be built on, but it takes years and years you know, for them to the be regulated. If you remember, we had some proposals for them that never went anywhere, mostly because of that. They were just not settled. Um, but uh, that's not what this is to our understanding. Okay, thank you. We have uh, looked into the environmental on this, and it was just a clean fill construction uh, hit, so there's no nothing to prevent any uh, construction on it at this time. Okay, any comments? Any further comments by the board? Yeah, I just have one question. Uh, I assume the delay in uh, petition 19 is until you have a firm uh, buyer for lot two? Um, so 
the way I'll address a lot too at this time is we have, we are close to getting under contract. Uh, we had filed anticipating their use and it comes to uh, some recent discussions have shown that we may have misjudged slightly what their use is and we need some time to get uh, better drawings in front of the city so the city can refine its staff report. Okay. So is it, any other comments? Anyone in the audience wish to speak in favor? Anyone opposed? Chair closes petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a motion. Move to approve. Second. A motion second to approve the petition. Call the board, please. Mr. Dotry. Aye. Mr. Riggs. Aye. Ms. Rohr. Aye. Ms. Saffer. Aye. Mr. Alessio. Aye. Mr. Hennessy. Aye. Aye. And that uh, petition will go before the city council the second meeting in May with recommendation for approval. Uh, this can, companion petition, 2021-21, uh, uh, I won't read uh, this uh, totally. Um, I'm going to skip through it. Uh, but this uh, special use permit for, for is for a truck equipment and sales service and repair facility. And this uh, is for lot one in that particular uh, site plan that's up on the screen. All site specific information surrounding zoning, applicable regulations are the same. Uh, I'm gonna skip through the first uh, part of the discussion and go to the second uh, paragraph, uh, which is for the petition subject to this request, transport properties intends to lease the 10.1 acre lot one to a user for a truck tractor and equipment sales service and repair facility. The proposed user has been identified as Navistar. Conceptual site plan for this lot shows a 17,000 square foot office and service facility. The building will have six service bays. There will be 260 parking stalls for truck cab sales, 18 stalls for truck cab service, 11 stalls for truck cab and trailer service and 54 car parking stalls. The conceptual site plan is included in the staff report package. Uh, the last paragraph again is the same, including our standards for landscaping, design standards, uh, storm detention and so forth. Those are all the same as what was previously read. Under conditions, the zoning board desires to re recommend approval. The following conditions would be included that a site plan and landscaping plan shall be submitted again. Architectural plan shall be submitted that uh, adheres to our non-residential design standards, uh, that a business license again would be secured before opening. Uh, the 180 day special use la lapsing clause uh, as what was previously read would be included. And then uh, the failure to comply uh, uh, section uh, or uh, condition as well is the same on that. And with that, that concludes our staff report. Petitioner? You've been sworn in, Father. Good afternoon again, uh, Chairman Hennessy, uh, members of the board. Um, we would stand behind staff's report as they indicated. Uh, we actually do have this uh, a prospective tenant and I believe we have leases out for signature on this one. Uh, the prospective tenant is Navistar. Um, they'd be doing truck sales, uh, repair and service on, you know, truck, uh, you know, truck tractors. Um, and they're looking to locate their facility here. I don't know that there's much more to say uh, about that at this time. Uh, as previously referenced, we're hoping that they will need some extra space and take down, uh, you know, lease or take down part of lot three as well. Um, but we would recommend uh, and ask that the board approve our special use for uh, truck sales service and repair. Thank you. Board, any questions? Comments? Anyone in the audience in favor? Anyone opposed? Chair closes the petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Please pull the board. Mr. Riggs. Aye. Ms. Rohr. Aye. Ms. Safford. Aye. Mr. Alessio. Aye. Mr. Doctree. Aye. Mr. Hennessy. Aye. Moving on to the next item on the agenda. 
old new business not for final action or recommendation we have none moving on under public comments this section is for anyone wanting to speak regarding non-agenda items and are allowed a maximum of four minutes not a question and answer period and staff in the zoning board of appeals does not generally respond to public comments please note speakers who engage in conduct interest to the harmony of the zoning board of appeals shall be called to order by the presiding officer and may forfeit the opportunity to speak looking like the room is cleared out we have none of those so we <laughs> safely assume that there's no one you want to end this already <laughs> mm. we're just getting warmed up no. I don't, don't want to end it. I've been here 44 years. I'm just starting to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take okay, that. Because <laughs> this meeting was so bad. I will consider a motion to, ad to adjourn. To adjourn? Motion. I make a motion. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second against my objection. <laughs> <laughs> Call the board. Ms. Roar. Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Nocturne? Definitely aye. Mm -hmm. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. 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 Mr. Riggs?